This is the total opposite here. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is what you get when you get comfortable, right? Shout out to The Wire. I think it was season two. I loved season two because it highlighted the mindset and the desperation for when you start to see unions get decimated, when you start to get see jobs get taken away, right? Then they say, what are you going to do for the people? But the value that they could have added is already gone. Right. When you see people that need, they work differently. When you see people that are entitled, they move like this and they still gonna make a quarter million dollars a year. They wait all day. And then come back the next day while three hour waits are common. Some truckers have been in the port for days. You messing with my bag, fam. There are some people that's making a extraordinary amount of money for doing regular everyday jobs. Now, I've been studying logistics. I've been I've been studying everything related to um, how you get goods and services. I'm just super interested in that right now. I don't know why. I don't know. I get into these modes all the time where, you know, sometimes I'll be studying animals. Like I'll go into this rabbit hole on YouTube where I'm trying to understand how certain animals hunt and how certain animals prevent themselves from you know, getting hunted by those animals and all that type of stuff, right? Everything pertains to real life. But right now, for some reason, I'm into everything related to shipping and logistics and getting things across the border. I don't know if it's going to become some kind of investment that I wind up seeing or getting into, but I'm incredibly curious about how things are moving from place to place, from China, which shipping canals, which ports are now running 24-7, and so somebody sent this to me, right? And it says lazy crane operators making a quarter million dollars a year over at the port. And this is coming straight from the truckers. So shout out to all of my truckers. Shout out to my homie at the Thinking Man podcast. He says, uh, this is high quality content. I'm always going to be pouring into y'all. I'm always going to be pouring into y'all. So shout out to my man at the Thinking Man podcast. And I do want to take some calls. After we have this conversation. So I'm going to drop the link in the chat. I want to talk money talk with y'all. And then we can go from there. All right. But let's get through this really quickly. And then we're going to start pulling y'all up because I got time. I want to make time to be able to have conversations with you guys. Okay. So let's get into the article and then let's figure out what we can glean from this article. So that we can then apply it to our life or add value to your life. Okay. So um, crane operators who belong to a powerful union and earn up to a quarter million dollars a year transferring containers from strip from ships to trucks are worsening the supply chain crisis that threatens Christmas by goofing off on the job. Frustrated truckers told the Washington Examiner. Now you are talking to a person that absolutely despises what the union has become. Shout out to all of my workers that's on the lines and all of that. I rock with y'all. I love y'all. But I'm telling you that the union that you see today is much different than the unions of yesteryear. I've largely witnessed as a person that, that worked in steel mills and stuff like that. I've largely witnessed that it seems as though you pay your dues to unions so that the worst of you, the worst of you are protected. The worst of you are protected. And then my mindset became even more of that, right? I, I started to feel even more of that when I started to get my own businesses, because when you hire your own people, you know, you get to see the real nature of what people are and who they are and how it is that they operate on a regular basis. Shout out to the UAW. But let's go into the article. The finger pointing at the busy Los Angeles ports comes as scores of shipping or not shipping container, scores of container ships are anchored off of the California coast, waiting in some cases for weeks to unload their freight. Weeks. They are waiting for weeks for them to unload their freight. Mm. The Biden administration has scrambled to get shipping executives, port officials, and labor to tackle the problem. Unsuccessfully, might I add. While the reasons for the bur uh, burgeoning Backlog are complex. Truck drivers say not everyone seems to be working together. You're only as strong as your weakest link. 
Shout out to Operator G for getting to the bag. You're only as strong as your weakest link. See, I agree. Unions are a great thing when they're used properly. But in order for us to come to this conversation in good faith, Martin, in order for us to come to this conversation in good faith, Martin, you're going to have to acknowledge the good and the bad. All right. But let's keep going. Um, in 15 years of doing this job, I've never seen them work slower, says Antonio, who has spent hours waiting at Los Angeles County ports for cargo to be loaded. So one of the issues that we see happening today, ladies and gentlemen, and this is something that almost everybody is grappling with the apples, your manufacturing companies that are manufacturing your laptop computers, the cars, all of these foreigns that y'all are trying to buy, anything, Amazon stuff. There is logistics problems from top to bottom, from the, the delivery drivers to the places by which ship all of this content from coast to coast for you to be able to get what it is that you want. It's the reason why inflation is going up. One of the reasons, not the only reason, it's the reason why it costs more to ship products, goods and services. And it's always based off of several log jams that come along with things that we're seeing, such as what you're seeing in this article, right? Crane operators take their time like three to four hours just to get to one container. That is insane. And I've seen it happen. Not at ports, but at, in steel mills, I've seen people move at a glacial pace to be able to do whatever it is that they're going to do only because they know they can get away with it. You can't say anything to them or they will just go to someone else. They are accountable to nobody. Whenever somebody lacks accountability, you can see them move how they're going to move. They're going to do the minimum required in order to get things done. They spoke to six truck drivers at the Long Beach Terminal Island entry route. Um, each described crane operators as lazy, prone to long lunches, and quick to retaliate to retaliate against complaints. Allegations were backed up by a labor consultant who has worked on the waterfront for 40 years. None of none of the truck drivers or none of the truckers interviewed for this story wanted to provide their last name because they fear reprisals at the port. That's crazy. None of these dudes even want to give their last name because they don't even want to be subjected to having to go back and deal with these operators, these crane operators. But here's the good part. Here's the good part. The crane operators are part of an international longshore and warehouse union. Of course they are. Which is why people hate working at places like Amazon. Right. There's no balance. There's going to be extremes on one level and then extremes where people are going to. Uh, control the narrative as far as like the union. You're going to have Amazon that's going to work you to death. And then you got the the, the crane operators at the port that's going to like be like, we're going to do what we want to do. When we, there's no middle road. There's never any temperance. And what happens is there becomes extremes across the board, um, which also represents longshoremen, veteran operators who have a set schedule, make approximately a quarter million dollars a year, while others receive daily work assignments and make 200,000. So they get into the bag. These are the men that the ladies say they want. They say they want high value men that are taking a time and retaliating against truckers that complain that they're not getting a, they loads fast enough. Um, a Hong Kong cargo ship is unloaded uh, in Long Beach Harbor. And we're going to get into that. Shout out to Uncle Stu. Uncle Stu said, in order to level up, you must drop the dead weight. The government has been dead weight on business producers for a long time, while, uh, for a long while now. Too many businesses looking for people, yet people are now home getting paid to not work. Shaking my head. Shout out to Uncle Stu. I appreciate the super chat. Appreciate everybody that rock with me. But he is right. He is right. Right. There becomes an extreme in which. 
the thing that was supposed to help you is the thing that you then become dependent on and lean on and normalize. And that just becomes a part of your daily life. The union was not meant to make people lazy. It was meant for making sure that there was workplace safety, making sure that you can collectively bargain to get the best deal for the members that joined that union for protection against uh, management that was using things that wasn't work related against other people that are working for them. But people take the tools that is supposed to be for you in a positive way and they make it to be something that it's not. But let's continue. Let's continue, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to make that sure that's right. There we go. All right. We're going to expand me. I need to get a little bigger on that screen. Um, but here's the thing. What you do then hurts other people. Right. Check it out. Um, what you talk about is perfectly described behavior said of the crane operators. This is a reflection. This is all a reflection of the management they have down there. The inmates run the asylum. This is what I see happening across the Internet. The inmates are running the asylum. The loudest voices are usually the ones that are the most negative. The managers are all afraid to say anything because the operators are so powerful they get management fired if they don't like them. That's a heck of a lot of power. That's a heck of a lot of headache to put up with. I'm not having it. The inmates is not running the asylum ever. Most truckers are independent contractors. Now, these are the people that are making their money based off of how the crane operators are moving, who are paid per container delivery and make a fraction of a crane operator's salary. They don't give a piss about no truckers. They all about self. They only arrive at the docks after receiving notification that the cargo is ready for pickup. Waiting hours for shipping containers to be loaded onto their trucks is frustrating and those who have complained were swiftly dealt with. They'll go get the police and kick you out and tell you to leave. Then you get banned from coming back. So not only are they going to make you wait and shut the piss up and you're going to get this how I'm giving it. If you complain or you say anything like the truckers were saying that they're not even going to give their last names. If you complain or say anything, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to prevent you from getting to the bag. We cutting off your supply line when it comes to getting to the money. That's pretty ballsy. Shout out to the unions. Randy says, so wouldn't the question be for the weak links, what can upper management do to motivate and provide incentives for the employees? I think, Randy, that these people are too far gone. If you've ever worked in a plant or if you've ever been a part of a powerful union, it is hard. It is hard because the thing about it is, I believe, let me just, let me give my little monologue right here. I believe that bad apples are bad apples. Some people can't be helped. There are people that will get the job and be there just long enough to get their 90 days in or to get their union in or whatever, become a part of the union, and then they just pull back. So the motivation for some people, not all, but for for the people that are trash is whether or not they're going to get fired. Either I'm going to put you in a space where I'm going get, to get rid of your way. You're going to do what you're supposed to do. They're going to show up every day for work. I've seen it happen, y'all. I've seen people show up every day for work until they got their 90 days in. Or they're going to be late all the way up until whatever the labor department or whatever the, the UAW or whatever labor union has negotiated as the threshold for you to then start receiving disciplinary action. And then when a new year kicked in or the new calendar year kicked in, they went right back to doing what it is that they're going to do. Look at that. Brittany will tell you. She in the Fort Wayne Mafia. They don't mess around. They don't mess around. I know exactly what the piss I'm talking about. I'm talking from experience. All right. Check this out. Or sometimes the crane operator will meet out punishment by skipping the trucker and working on somebody else, exacerbating the weight. What an a-hole. I always want to make sure that people is taken care of. I always want to pour into people. Right. I always want to figure out how it is that I can add value to people's lives. 
And that's largely because I don't depend on anything, any union, anybody, right? When you become a part of upper management, an executive, you're an at-will employee and the value that you have is often what you can negotiate. They're going to pay you what you're worth. They're going to pay you based off of the value that you bring, not based off of what the union negotiates for you. And so you're incentivized to do good for people. You move up, you level up because you pour into people, because you build relationships. This is the total opposite here. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is what you get when you get comfortable, right? Shout out to The Wire. I think it was season two. I loved season two because it highlighted the mindset and the desperation for when you start to see unions get decimated, when you start to get see jobs get taken away. Right. Then they say, what are you going to do for the people? But the value that they could have added is already gone. Right. When you see people that need, they work differently. When you see people that are entitled, they move like this and they still going to make a quarter million dollars a year. They wait all day. And then come back the next day while three hour waits are common. Some truckers have been in the port for days. You messing with my bag, fam. I know some people that's going to come and see you. You messing with the bag, bro. Huh. And then they'll charge you a storage fee if you don't get the container out of there. Truckers unlucky enough to be waiting around lunchtime will watch as the entire crane crew stops working instead of stat instead of staggering their hours. They leave for two hours and you and you stuck there with no one there. As of Wednesday, and the union didn't re reply to the comment, obviously, as of Wednesday, 59 ships were at a berth unloading cargo at one of the three Los Angeles ports. Another 88 are anchored off the coast, stretching along Orange County around the Catalina Island, according to Marine Exchange, which coordinates traffic, right? Right. The wait time to come, come into the port can be weeks. It's people that's going to be stuck on their ships for weeks. They messing up all the money all the way around, y'all. The backlog stretching 20 miles along the coast has forced many, re, many large retailers to circumvent the bottleneck and charter their own ships so products can be on the shelves before Christmas shopping season. Incoming cargo is up 30 percent secondary issue leading to the crunch is a lack of avail available chassis at the ports to place the cargo containers onto before they're hauled away by the truckers while the truckers say they are making the same number of trips as previous years for some reason chassis in short supply for those who don't own one and they wait for returns to come in in an effort to clear the long jam now the president President, President Biden negotiated. He had to negotiate 24 hour port operation, which is not going to lower the log jam, ladies and gentlemen. Let's be clear. The ports in around the world, they already was operating at 24, 24, seven. Everybody's bag is being messed up. Meanwhile, they still continue to make. They still continue to make. A quarter million dollars a year. Or more. 